Hi friends! Let's get started with Chapter 8 of James and the Giant Peach. Enjoy! Chapter 8 The news that a peach, almost as big as a house, had suddenly appeared in someone's garden, spread like wildfire across the countryside. And the next day, a stream of people came scrambling up the steep hill to gaze upon this marvel. Quickly, Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker called in carpenters and had them build a strong fence around the peach to save it from the crowd. At the same time, these two crafty women stationed themselves at the front gate with a large bunch of tickets and started charging everyone for coming in. Roll up! Roll up! Aunt Spiker yelled. Only one shilling to see the giant peach! Have price for children under six weeks old, Aunt Sponge shouted. One at a time, please. Don't push, don't push, you're all gonna get in. Hey, you! Come back there, you haven't paid! By lunchtime, the whole place was a seizing mass of men, women, and children, all pushing and shoving to get a glimpse of this miraculous fruit. Helicopters were landing like wasps all over the hill, and out of them poured swarms of newspaper reporters, cameramen, and men from the television companies. It'll cost you double to bring a camera, Aunt Spiker shouted. All right, all right, they answered. We don't care. And the money came rolling into the pockets of the two greedy aunts. But while all this excitement was going on outside, poor James was forced to stay locked in his bedroom, peeping through the bars of his window at the crowds below. The disgusting little brute will only get in everyone's way if we let him wander about, Aunt Spiker had said early that morning. Oh, please, he had begged. I haven't met any other children for years and years, and there's going to be lots of them down there for me to play with, and perhaps I could help you with the tickets. Cut it out. Aunt Sponge had snapped. Your Aunt Spiker and I are about to become millionaires, and the last thing that we want is the likes of you messing things up and getting in the way. Later, when the evening of the first day came and the people had all gone home, the aunts unlocked James's door and ordered him outside to go pick up all the banana skins and orange peels and bits of paper that the crowd had left behind. Could I please have something to eat first? He asked. I haven't had a thing all day. No, they shouted, kicking him out the door. We're too busy to make food. We're counting our money. But it's dark, cried James. Get out, they yelled, and stay out until you've cleaned up all the mess. The door slammed, the key turned in the lock. Poor James just can't seem to catch a break, can he? He's having a tough time, but things might be getting better. It's always darkest before the dawn, isn't it? Did you also notice that the author used some very interesting descriptive language in this chapter? For example, when he said that helicopters were landing like wasps all over the hill and that reporters swarmed out, Helicopters aren't actually wasps, are they? That's an example of a simile, which is figurative or descriptive language that compares two things that are different. So listen and pay close attention, because you may hear lots more figurative language in the chapters to come. I hope you enjoyed chapter 8, and I look forward to reading chapter 9 for you. Thank you.